एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू लर्निंग विलेज आई होप यू गाइज आर डूइंग गुड एंड स्टेइंग सेफ सो आई एम बैक विद अनदर अमेजिंग एंड रियली रियल इंटरेस्टिंग वीडियो फॉर ऑल दी एस्पायरिंग डेटा प्रोफेशनल्स एंड फॉर माय लवली डेटा कम्युनिटी सो फ्यू वीक्स बैक आई क्रिएटेड दिस वीडियो वेयर आई टॉक्ड अबाउट दी क्लाउड डेटा इंजीनियर रोड मैप एंड यू गाइज फाइंड इट रियली इन्फॉर्मेटिव एंड आई सो फ्यू कमेंट्स इन दैट वीडियो वेयर यू आस्क टू ब्रिंग मोर वीडियोज रिलेटेड टू क्लाउड डेटा इंजीनियरिंग टॉपिक सो आई थॉट टू स्टार्ट विद अ वीडियो और अ जॉब प्रोफाइल which is really really demanding nowadays and that is AWS data engineer so this video you can take it as a road map as well to become a AWS data engineer or let's say you are completely new into the data engineering and you are exploring the cloud side and started with the AWS then definitely you should know what are the important AWS services which you will be using while creating the data pipelines or migration related things or anything you will be doing related to the data engineering then definitely you must know these important AWS services so i have created a very extensive document where i have listed down those important aws services which you will be using as a aws data engineer and that thing i have curated based on my personal experience as well because i was working at amazon till 2 years as a data engineer and honestly each and every day we were creating those scalable data pipelines with the help of these aws services i will also talk about the average salaries for the aws data engineer role and i will also highlight the important companies which are hiring for the aws data engineer role so make sure to watch this video till the very end and if you are liking cloud data engineering related content then make sure to like this video in big numbers and also subscribe the channel and press the notification icon and guys if you remember this podcast where i featured jayant who cracked the senior data engineer role at zoom and in that podcast he shared his complete life journey with us but today i will tell you who actually helped him to crack the zoom interviews and that plan platform was tutored academy one of the best platform created for the working professional and they are providing few amazing and extensive courses in different fields especially for the working professionals and those fields are the data science artificial intelligence data structures full stack development so if you are a working professional who is actually stuck in different job profile or let's say you are not feeling prepared for the interviews then this is the platform which can help you to land into your dream companies courses will be based on 100% interactive classes and awesome doubt support you will be getting direct one to one mentorship from the mang mentors and one of the important thing which makes tutor academy is the first choice of working professional that they are having the real world projects given by the startups and you will be actually working in these projects so by the time you will be in the course you will be working in these real world projects and you can mention it in your resume which will make your portfolio very very strong and here are the amazing success stories which you can check their aluminas are working in top top notch companies of the world like microsoft goldman sachs jp morgan and here is the experience of jayant as well who is working at zoom and their mentors also belongs to the top notch companies like microsoft google amazon deloitte inmobi and many other so what are you waiting for i have provided an exclusive link in the video description use that one and check out this platform and if you are a working professional then i can assure you this platform will help you to land in your dream job so this is the document which i have prepared and i have listed down those important aws services which you will be using to become a good aws data engineer so let me open it and one by one i will talk about individual service and i'll give you a quick overview of that so first very much important the aws s3 this is the service which is basically a kind of persistent storage or a fault tolerant storage mostly s3 will be used to store the data and we can also say it will be used to create the data lakes because in the data lakes we keep our data in the raw format so second is aws lambda so this is kind of serverless computing service which helps you to like execute your code without any infrastructure setup and all so that's why it is also very very much important and third service is actually aws iam and that is used to control the accesses for different different services because within the aws when you will be having multiple aws services and they want to interact with each other they need some kind of control or they need some kind of policies and accesses that what kind of exact capabilities of another service this particular service can use and for that we will be having the aws iam and also user based accesses can also be created with the help of this service and fourth service is aws ec2 so whenever you need some servers like on demand with different different configurations then we can use this service because this service will help you to get on demand servers and another service is aws secret manager so this service will be used to store all your important secrets credentials let's say you want to make a connection to the database and you want to 
access those credentials programmatically then you need to keep it somewhere and that's how we can use this aws secret manager it will keep our credentials and that too in the encrypted form as well next is the aws emr so this is also a managed aws service and basically used for the distributed computation and it will help you to spin up your cluster with some configuration and will also provide the services of spark hadoop hive and multiple other things next is the aws glue which is another distributed computation service here managed much more efficient and comes with some more amazing features as well because in aws emr it will be a kind of like cluster and there we need to write the script won't be having any capabilities to manage the things with the help of ui drag and drop features and many other things and that thing will be provided by the aws glue it will also help you to create the metadata of all the files which are stored in the s3 and even in different databases like rds athena and these things and you can create a metadata or a kind of catalog within the glue service and you can read the data from the source location in the batch form as well and in the incremental fashion as well next and another important service is aws sns that is basically a simple notification service so whenever let's say some event happened let's say you uploaded one file into the s3 bucket after that you want to notify any job application that file has been uploaded and read this file and start the computation so here we can use and leverage this sns service in order to generate those notification and send it to the target subscriber primary mode of working is the push like it will just broadcast that particular notification to all its subscriber so that is the main working functionality of it next is the aws sqs so this is a kind of queuing service available in the aws like we know about the kafka and the rabbit mq so similar kind of thing is available in aws and that service is actually aws sqs and it comes with two modes like lifo mechanism and fifo mechanism you can use the queue in any particular order you want and this will actually work in the poll mechanism like the way we poll the records from the kafka topic using the poll mechanism same thing you need to do while consuming records from the sqs next is the aws dms so this service will basically help you to interact with multiple data sources and capture their records for any kind of cdc event like change data capture kind of pipeline you are creating and you have pointed this service to any specific source and any updates or inserts or deletions are happening on a particular table that will be captured and those event can be sent to somewhere else as well and next is the aws kinesis which is also one of the most important aws service because it will be used for all the real time kind of data pipelines and it will similarly work in that uh, streaming fashion right with the help of dms you are capturing the cdc event and in the real time you are pushing in the kinesis stream and there could be another application which is listening to this kinesis stream and consuming the data from there so this service will be dedicated for the real time data pipelines next is the aws rds so the aws rds kind of database service available in the aws like we have the mysql and postgres so similar kind of transactional databases if we want to use in the cloud we can use the aws rds service next is the aws athena that is also a kind of database service available in the aws but this is completely serverless because for the athena the source will be s3 like your data will be located in the s3 and with the help of athena execution engine which is serverless we can execute our queries for the data which is residing in s3 and next is the aws redshift so aws redshift is a very very popular and scalable data warehousing service available in aws so that is something which will be dedicatedly used for all type of analytical queries and next is the aws dynamo so this is kind of no sql database available in aws and it works on the key value mode like the records and data will be stored in the form of key values and a very very scalable and widely used no sql database in the industry next is the aws cloudwatch so this cloudwatch service actually cater multiple things right uh, it can schedule your jobs based on some specific times let's say you want to trigger your lambda job you want to trigger your glue job or any emr schedule job right so that can be done with the help of cloudwatch you can provide the cron expression and let's say you want to trigger some another service based on the events right or the event pattern captured by another application that can also be done with the help of cloudwatch and we can also use the cloudwatch in order to monitor the system health and what's the compute time and the cpu uses and many other multiple matrices and based on that we can generate the notification if 
it breaches some particular threshold last but not the least the service is aws quick site so it is a kind of dashboarding service available in aws very similar to power bi and tableau so similar thing you can use in the aws in order to create those amazing charts and the dashboards so that's what i had for the important aws services and i'm pretty sure this will be really really helpful if you are starting your career with the cloud and specifically in the big data then these are the aws services which you will use on day to day basis and not talking about the important companies or the kind of companies you can target for the aws data engineer so it will be always and always the service based companies and the consulting firms because they will be having multiple clients who want to move their pipelines from complete on premises to the cloud platforms like aws azure and data engineering that's why the demand of the aws data engineer is definitely increasing and along with that other cloud data engineering profiles like azure data engineer and gcp data engineer that demand is also increasing a lot so you should definitely target these companies like the service based firms and the consulting firm if you want to move into the cloud data engineering roles not talking about the average salary of aws data engineer in us and in india in usa on an average aws data engineers are getting the compensation of $100000 per annum which is definitely mind mind blowing but in contrast here in india this is a sad reality like if you are starting your career with service based companies or a consulting based firm then for the aws data engineer role at least in the recent time i have seen the people getting the ctc in their starting phase for the aws data engineer role and that will be approximately range between 10 to 15 lakhs per annum which is a kind of decent start for anyone who is completely new to it and is starting their career so that is the average compensation you can expect but nowadays definitely there is a culture of remote jobs so let's say you are having a really really good data engineering skill set with the aws services then try to apply for those remote jobs and you can also get a ctc of 70 80 lakhs per annum so that's what i had for you guys in this video i'm pretty sure you would have found it very very informative so if yes then make sure to like this video in the big numbers and if you want me to bring more such videos for other cloud data engineer profile like azure data engineer gcp data engineer and this kind of roadmap feel free to put it in the comment section and also let me know one more thing in the comments whether i should bring the cloud data engineers from different companies for the podcast or not and again if you are new to the channel and liking this kind of content make sure to subscribe the channel and press the notification icon and i will see you guys in the next week with another amazing video till then just stay safe stay home take care yourself and your family too